right now. You're listening to eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. Hello and welcome to eLearn Chat, our new podcast featuring prominent leaders, shakers and movers in the e-learning and training industry. Hi everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti and you're watching eLearn Chat, where talk is knowledge. And here we are, it is episode, I believe it's 45, might be 46. Anyway, today we've got with us Jean. Hey Jean, how are you? I'm great, good morning. Hello. <laughs> And we are having one of those Skype days, so there's a chance we may or may not be all here in a couple of minutes, but hopefully we're good. And um, we have a special guest today. Today we have the honor of having Tanya Seidel. She is the VP of Product Management and Training at Trivantis. She's responsible for making sure that the user interface and the user experience all meet client needs so that everything makes for a great look and feel. And as a result, Tanya works with all the different groups at Trivantis, including marketing, sales, training, and development. So you deal with a lot of different people. Tanya, how are you today? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Oh, more than welcome. We saw you at the show not too long ago, and and this was at the ASTD Tech Knowledge Show. You were busy doing all sorts of presentations. I, I saw you doing the, the vendor booth presentations. Were you also doing other presentations? Um, I did a... Um just one of the demo sessions in the main exhibition hall that went over very well. And then we had some some clients of ours that were doing some lecture related presentations that I was able to attend also. So overall, it was a really great show for us. We enjoyed it. Oh, that's good. Now, you're in Boca Raton today, right? I certainly am. This is the home of our development offices. So I'm actually down here this week working with our development teams. Whip in hand, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> They're programmers. Tanya, you used, to work, you used to work at IBM also. You were a, a senior engineer consultant over there, right? I was a, I initially worked in test over there, and then, yes, I ended up in development. And um, right across the street or not far from here was the birthplace of the original PC. So there's mm -hmm. definitely a legacy of IBM in this town, and they're still around today, obviously. Yeah, is that is that division still there at all, or did it all just get sold over to Lenovo? They've downsized quite a bit from back in those days, but there still is a very strong IBM presence here, that's for sure. Yeah, that's great. And one of the things you want to talk about today is the new review link that came out in Lectora 10.6, which allows for collaboration, correct? That is correct. Actually, it's more of a review tool. So... As you know, Lectora is an e-learning development tool that can publish content for the web or for AICC and SCORM learning management systems. And historically, we have released a new version of Lectora in December of every single year. And this past December was no exception. Except this year, we actually came out with this brand new product called ReviewLink that works seamlessly with Lectora. And what it does is it allows our Lectora authors to publish their content to this review link web-based application in order to give external reviewers, whether they might be subject matter experts or instructional designers, what have you, give reviewers access to the published content so they can review it, look at it, also make comments about the content, and there's no need for them to install any additional software or for them to even have Lectora. So it's a great new tool that really allows um, reviewers a first look at content being created by Lectora authors. Now that's interesting. Does it also allow for it tested the SCORM as well? I'm sorry, can you the, say that again? Does it also test the SCORM as well? The it does not. So because ReviewLink is not a learning management system of any type, we don't actually use any kind of AICC or SCORM elements of the content. So it's really just for more of the functionality of the interaction and obviously checking to make sure that the, the content itself is okay, but it does not necessarily test the functionality or the integration of the AICC SCORM with users' learning management systems. But, it, but it's a really good way to get all of the um, instructional designers, everybody involved, to take a look at the content, the subject matter experts, to make sure everything's going well. Yes, absolutely. It's for, um, it's historically, the reason why we came out with it is because we have heard over and over again from our lector authors that um, typically the, the 
the authors creating content are not the subject matter experts that are responsible for ensuring that the content is accurate. So you have these two separate groups of people who still need to be able to look at the content and understand it and read it and evaluate it. And um, as an author, there's always been sort of a gap there and okay, well, um, my subject matter experts don't have lectora, so, and even if they did have lectora, they don't necessarily know how to use it. They don't, we don't want to just put it in the learning management system because there's processes and procedures and rules involved with what goes in a learning management system. Mm -hmm. So there was a need for an interim solution that would allow reviewers to access the content and be able to review it prior to taking that next step and making the content public on a learning management system or what have you. So we've really hey, kind of um, closed that gap with review link, and of course we've ensured that it works seamlessly with Lectora so that authors have basically a one-click solution to get their content out there and get reviewers reviewing it. Yeah, that's nice. Jean? I'm curious, yeah, I'm curious about something. So before, before uh, review link came out, were subject matter experts needing to fly into town in order to review content or were they kind of flying blind just hoping you know crossing their fingers that it would all go well and then there'd be some drama after things were rolled out what were, what were some of the scenarios that were playing out that, well, that have been corrected from what now? we've heard from many of our clients a lot of it was um, our authors would try to print out the content that they've created in lectora and as you mm -hmm. know when you have a flat page, you clearly can't test interactivity that might be in a course. So uh, there was, you took this highly interactive course and basically turned it into a stack of papers and handed that over to a reviewer. And that wasn't mm -hmm. necessarily a good solution because not everything could be tested and reviewers couldn't look at the interactivity of the course. Alternative solutions would include um, users, you know, hosting content on their own web servers or what have you. but depending upon the client and depending upon the organization, some authors just didn't have access to those web servers to be able to post that content. And then there's always the problem of how do you actually collect that feedback? Should it go into a Word document or should it be inside of an Excel spreadsheet? Mm -hmm. And then once those comments are addressed, how do you address those changes? And then how do you communicate back to the reviewer what's been changed and why it's been changed and things of that nature? So there were a whole host of issues that, that came about in this review process as we learned from our clients and have learned for several years. And we finally came up with what we believe is a fantastic solution for all of the above. So now not only is there a great way for authors to store and host their content somewhere that's hosted by us so they don't have to worry about it. They don't need their own web servers or their own separate instances of a learning management system. And then separately within the tool itself, which I hope to show you in a few minutes here, we collect all of the comments, tabulate them. We have statuses assigned to all of the comments so that for both the publisher or the author and the reviewer, they have the ability to communicate back and forth without having to send emails every day or make phone calls or what have you. It's all managed inside of the review link application. Well, one of the things mm. I, I like about it is that you don't have to load any plugins and you don't really have a network issue from an, an internal network issue. If you have people all over the U.S., all over the world, wherever they are, it doesn't matter. They just go to a website and it's all hosted there and it makes the collaboration just a lot easier and you don't have to deal with all the firewall issues. Hmm. So if I'm hearing you right, uh, um, that means that somebody can be, you know, people can be all over the world, and as long as they have a connection to the internet, that they can, you know, begin reviewing content and commenting and participating in the review process. That's absolutely correct. I like it. I'd love to see it. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense, and and it does make it a lot easier because again, I've seen some of the other solutions out there, and they usually require plugins, or they usually have firewall issues within internal networks because not everybody has access to everything. So this is this is a, a clever way to do it, and um, yeah, it's funny. I have it. I haven't used it yet, which which means we haven't really taken advantage of it, and we have one specific client which we could definitely use because. They never know how to review anything. So this would make it super easy for them. Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, <clears throat> the bigger the client, usually the more hamstrung they are by certain things. Hmm. So. I, I was curious. Um, I was looking at Lectora's client list, which was like eye-popping. Starbucks, Department of Defense, and on and on. B of A, on and on and on. 
Uh, are you able to share with us who has, you know, jumped on it and adapted it immediately, given it was, it's just been out for a month and a half, is that right? That's correct. So we released it in um, early, early December, and we actually released mm -hmm. it initially as a beta. So um, we have a first a official version coming out in just a couple months here, maybe even less than yeah. that. And um, the, through the beta process, we really just wanted to get feedback. We wanted to make sure we were on the right track, and we wanted to make sure we were giving people the features they need in this type of review tool. So mm -hmm. the beta has been really super successful. And quite honestly, I don't know um, the list of clients that are actively using it. I just don't have it committed to memory, but we have mm -hmm. received a ton of very positive feedback about it. So we're really very excited and because of the great feedback we've been we've been getting, it is going to come out of beta very quickly, and we'll even have some new features in it in, in as soon as the first version, version one. That, as I mentioned, will be coming out in the coming months. Thank you. Um, uh, if I may, I, I'm uh, looking at the chat room, and uh, Don Mahoney, who actually is on vacation and and is getting. Um, uh, social media uh, renewal right here with us here on eLearn Chat. Uh, she asked, uh, she said, uh, does Lectora work on Mac? I know that's a broader question, but it's like pressing on her mind. Sure. Um, actually, to date, no, it does not work on a Macintosh. However, it's funny that you ask. I'm actually using a Mac today, but I've installed the Windows operating system on my Mac, and by installing the Windows operating system, I was then also able to install Lectora. So if you're using a boot camp or if you're using Parallels with your Macintosh computer, if you have that, that Windows operating system installed on your Mac, then absolutely you can use Lectora. And I use it all the time on my laptop, and I use this laptop for demos and for all kinds of things, and it works great. And the, deploy and so the cool. deployed courses will work on a Mac because they're HTML. Okay. That is correct. So the courses you create with Lectora are really platform agnostic. So they're um, as long as you're creating web-based content, which Lectora, we do give you the ability to create EXE files out of your content, but EXEs are Windows-based programs, as you know. So if you're creating that web-based content, then indeed it's, it's platform compatible across all the different platforms because really you're just relying on a browser. Yeah, including iPads. Uh, a lot of people wonder, and no, uh, actually, Lectora works beautifully on an iPad. Just, it certainly just don't does. use it's that flash content. You know, we've been criticized historically in the past because we've been considered kind of old school for um, sticking with rendering our content using HTML versus moving to Flash. And in the end, it's turned out to be a real advantage for us because, wow. as you know, Apple hasn't quite embraced the Flash <laughs> content. So... Um, because we produce the HTML content, our, the content that you create with Lectora and you publish can be accessed on iPads, iPhones, Android devices, Blackberries, you name it. Yeah, and it's really interesting because when Apple did the Flash thing, which is funny because Flash was one of the biggest development tools on a Mac back in the old days, it, it really actually did hurt Adobe. Adobe lost that one because now they've discontinued the Flash Player 4 mobile devices so the last version i think is 10 or 11 that's it we're done no more uh at least for for any time being uh that that actually pretty much wounded that whole flash development and i hear this from a lot of people that within two to five years flash is going to be gone i don't know mm. I, don't, I don't know that's a it's a prediction but it's interesting it's the the, the world the industry is heading towards html5 i know you folks are doing some work actually can you share anything about your efforts at HTML5 and where Lectora is going with that? Sure. I mean, to date, there, we're not using a ton of HTML5 just yet, but we are using it where necessary. So, for example, to date with Lectora, we use HTML5 when you're work, when you're adding uh, audio and video to your content. So, specifically, we use HTML5 so that across all of your different mobile devices, we can serve up that audio or video mm. content. And as of right now, that's the only place in Lectora where we're using HTML5 because it's, it's necessary to serve up that content. So as the standard stabilizes a little bit and as there are more components of HTML5 that make sense to Lectora, we certainly intend on putting them in there. That sounds good. Yeah, I know. I know. Hey, hey. Go ahead, Jean. Sorry about that. Uh, Tanya, I know that we're going to be uh, taking a look at review link in just a few minutes. Um, our, our chatters uh, couldn't help but asking, Jeff in Australia was curious, are you able to say, I guess your wedding, wedding is whistle for Lectora, 
Are you able to say how much it costs? Oh, sure, of course. We have a couple of different varieties of Lectora. Um, we have the base Lectora product in and of itself, and I'm terrible about rem remembering prices, so you can't hold me to these. However, okay. um, our base Lectora product in and of itself is around the range of $1,500. But then okay. we have our, what we refer to as our Lectora Inspire suite of tools. And that suite is really unique because it we've partnered with some really great tools so that in addition to Lectora, not, you also get um, Camtasia, which hopefully you're familiar with. It's a video editing mm -hmm. software made by TechSmith. And we mm -hmm. also integrate with it Snagit, which is a fantastic screen capture tool also by TechSmith. In Got addition, it. then we have the, a third tool called Flypaper, which is basically a WYSIWYG flash creation tool that also is integrated with Lectora. So the Inspire suite mm -hmm. consists of Lectora plus those three additional tools, and that mm -hmm. is around, I believe, $2,500. Okay, that gives us a general sense. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Now, did you guys acquire Flypaper? I heard rumors, but I'm not sure if that's... We did, actually. Did. We acquired okay. them this past summer, and um, we had so, so much great feedback from our users that were that embraced Inspire and how much they really enjoyed Flypaper. So uh, we wanted to further that partnership, and we acquired them in this over the summer this past year. And uh, Flypaper has been primarily involved in the digital signage space. However, we um, uh, recognizing that some of the things they were doing for digital signage were also totally applicable for e-learning and can be used very well in e-learning content. We wanted to make those tools available to our e-learning authors as well. Yeah. You guys also, we're, since since we're on the topic, you've got some other products that came out, which are sort of fun. One of them is the Snap and Power. We have Snap and I guess Snap and Power. That's right. So Snap itself is a PowerPoint plugin that enables you to basically create um, interactive flash content from your PowerPoint presentations. So uh, using PowerPoint, the Snap plugin gives you an extra set of features that enable you to do things such as record audio narration, synchronize that audio narration with um, animations that are in your PowerPoint presentation, give you the ability to add tests and quizzes and surveys and add flash animations and all kinds of different things that aren't natively available in PowerPoint itself. And then that will actually go out and publish the content to Flash. In addition to the Snap, we also then have Snap Empower, which is similar to Flypaper, and it's integrated directly in Snap so that you can uh, use Snap Empower to create some more heavy Flash interactions, if you will, um, whether they're uh, photo cubes or uh, timelines or chart interactive charts those type of things can be created with snap and power and then it's of course integrated with snap itself so you can drop them right into your powerpoint presentation and, and more than anything what did you price that at that's the kicker the both of those tools are only 99 dollars. so yeah, and that's um, really cheap compared just, to competition we really wanted to lower the the barrier of entry to some people that were just now getting involved in e-learning there's still a lot of people out there that are brand new to e-learning mm -hmm. so we wanted to give them a stepping stone to get started and the beauty of of snap is that we have made it so that any content that you create in snap can be transferred to lectora so oh. our our thought was um, if somebody wants training wheels, that's what Snap is for. They can use that to get up and running and begin to understand what e-learning is all about. And as they grow out of that, there is room to grow into the Lectora product. And you won't have to recreate everything you've done in Snap. It'll come right over to Lectora and work there. Yeah, and did you mention that's only 99 bucks? It's really, really <laughs> reasonable. <laughs> Rick is really into this $99. You know, that's, <laughs> you guys have been one of the first to put out a fairly mature solution for a very cheap price. So that's, mm -hmm. that's definitely uh, uh, an, an attention grabber, and, and it works. I think we have both those products, and they work really well. Good. So, Jean, you had another comment? Any other comments in the... Um, chat room right now we're all clear here i would love to see you know me i'm always eager to see the stuff i yeah. want to see review link gene wants to see the stuff so show me the stuff <laughs> did you want to well, show your great. screen sure let me go ahead and share my screen and i'll 
show you a little bit about reviewing. Okay. And there we go. We can see your screen. All right. So what you're looking at here is Lectora itself. And um, as I mentioned, our big new feature for this past December was Review Link. And where that comes into play with Lectora is through the publishing process. So using Lectora, you can select Publish. And then Publish to Review Link is an option there. When you do that, it goes through the typical, typical publishing process in Lectora. We do an initial error check. You saw all those messages go by. That's just us basically checking to make sure there are no errors in your title. From there, when you select Publish, you'll notice that you have some options here for how you want to invite reviewers to your content. So right here in this field, you can select or you can input the email addresses of any of the reviewers that you would like to review your content. So it really is a one-step publishing process to review link. It's going to publish this content, send it up to our review link servers, and simultaneously issue invitations to anyone that you, that you input as an email address in this reviewer field here. Further, you'll notice underneath there that you can indeed indicate that there is a comment due date. And we handle that within the review link application so that if, um, if the common due date has been reached, at that point, basically, we prevent your reviewers from adding any additional com comments. This gives you, as an author or as the publisher, the ability to go back, take those comments, make changes to the content, and then re-upload it again. And you can, of course, continue this process as often as necessary based on your review cycles and based on the feedback that you're getting from your reviewers. So I'm not going to do the um, actual publish process here because it's going to take quite a bit of time, but let me go ahead and pull up review link itself so you can see what this is all about. <clears throat> so you can imagine as a reviewer, you're going to get an email that says, Tanya has invited you to review this content. Click here, here are your credentials and log in. So when you get to review link, you'll simply sign in. And when you sign in, you're going to see an interface similar to the following here. Now, the interface that I'm looking at and that you're looking at is the interface for the publishers. So you'll notice as a publisher, first and foremost, you see your published content or my published content. So this shows you the content that you have posted to ReviewLink. In this case, I've only got one content item here. Notice that it is currently closed for comments, so I'm not accepting any additional feedback at this time. And then I can launch it as well. I also have the ability to, to take a look at who is currently reviewing this content. If I click on this reviewers button, it'll show me those people that are currently reviewing the content. There's an option there that, that enables you to choose whether or not if you have multiple reviewers, if they can see each other's comments or not. And then it also gives you the ability to invite additional reviewers here. So we give you sort of an address book, if you will, within ReviewLink that you can populate over time. And you can invite reviewers via this address book, which as you can see from the bottom half of this window here, my address book is currently empty. Or then further, you can simply just e input an, a series of additional email addresses of those reviewers you'd like to invite. Again, we go ahead and send those um, invitations to the reviewers so they're notified immediately and we give in the invitation we give instructions on how they can access the content and begin reviewing it. From a reviewer perspective what a reviewer is going to see is simply this tab called my content to review. So as a reviewer logging into review link they're only going to see this my content to review tab and the comments tab that coincides with it. On this tab, what you'll be able to see then is who the publisher is of the content, whether it's open or closed for comments, and what the due date is. Further, you can see how many total comments are there, and further, how many comments need attention. So as I mentioned earlier, the comments that you can create within ReviewLink have a status associated with them. So as changes to those comments occur, whether the publisher responds to the comment, or whether the publisher is updating the status of the content, we flag that as something that needs attention by that specific reviewer. And so at a quick first glance, they have the ability to see of all of this content what needs their attention and what doesn't. 
So let's take a look and see what happens when we actually launch this content. So I'll go ahead and launch this piece of content here. And let oh, me good. expand my screen here. So you can see this is actually a course that we just made available on our Lectora University. And we used ReviewLink to go through the review process ourselves. And it was actually fantastic. And it made the time it took to review it so much shorter than what it would typically take. But you'll notice that in this content, um, down at the bottom, there's this orange bar that shows you a little bit of information about the content. So it shows you the title, who the publisher is, when the comments are due, how many total comments are in the content, and then how many comments are on this specific page. At any given time, as you're navigating through the content, so you can see here within the upper half of the screen, I can use my typical navigation functionality that exists in the course itself to navigate around and move around within the course. And then as I find something that I need to make a comment about, on this bottom bar here that appears, I can simply click New Comment. When I do that, it's going to pop open this comment pane. And over on the right-hand side here, you'll be able to add a com comment summary and then any additional comment details. At that point in time, you can then submit the comment. So what this does is this actually then submits the comment and it creates it and tabulates it. And I'll show you in the, in the review link interface where you can then see the tabulated um, form of all of the different comments. But furthermore, as you're looking through these comments and creating comments, we also give you on the far left side here, direct access to any other comments that were previously made on this page, whether by you or by other reviewers based on your course settings here. So in this case, if I click on this existing comment, you'll see the middle portion of my pane has now been populated with this comment thread. So I can now see through the history of this comment that started on January 16th, the status of the comment was new, meaning that, of course, somebody originally created the comment, so it became a new one. And then the publisher fixed it. And as the publisher fixed it, he or she can certainly um, add additional comments. You'll notice that there was a comment added there that said, hey, there was a new content version that was published. And as a reviewer for those comments that have been fixed, you'll notice on the right hand side here, I have this ability to respond to this comment. Is it OK or is it not OK? In other words, did the fix address my comment or did it not? If it did, I simply can slip can select OK, and that is going to serve as an indicator to the publisher that, yes, that fix suits my needs. So we've really simplified this process for reviewers, made it super easy for you to just designate and say, yes, this is OK, or no, this is not OK. And it serves as an indicator to the publisher as to what they have to do further, or if they have to do anything further. So this has um, been a really great tool for people to use. And uh, the, the way that the comments are tabulated then is back on the main review link interface. So if I go to the comments tab, and this comments tab is accessible to both publishers and reviewers, it gives you the ability to, first of all, filter all of the different comments. So whether you want to filter by a specific status or if you want to filter by a specific content item, or further, if you want to filter by a specific reviewer, we give you those, those filters to filter between those things so that your list will only show you those comments that fall within those categories. And then you can see that the comment pane below here has a similar look and feel to the comment pane that we saw in the content itself. So this bottom panel here for any of the comments can be expanded. So if I want to look at, let's say, this fixed comment, I can highlight it. I can choose to keep this pane expanded or not. And now when I look at this, I can see, again, I can see the entire comment thread, the history of it. And furthermore, there's a button here called View in Content, where if I want to see what this is pertaining to in actual content itself, it'll launch that content window once again with my comment pane still available down at the bottom. So you can take a look at the actual comment in context with the content page that it refers to. Yeah, that's great. Jean, are there any comments in the chat room while Tanya is showing this? Um, uh, 
simply uh, Don Don was saying I love all this this rapid stuff um, and she just wishes she could take some time off and and dive into these tools because uh, it just looks I guess I'm guessing very yummy <laughs> <laughs> well I certainly hope it looks very yummy <laughs> And Jeff says, no comments. I'm busy paying attention. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, this seems very like a very well thought out tool. It, it sounds like you guys listen very closely to your to your clients and design accordingly. It's it's clear here that that's what actually you're doing. I like the implementation of this. It's it's clean. It's simple, and again, doesn't require any weird plugins or anything that internally will cause grief. That's right, and we've tried to make it so easy that. For users that are already familiar with the publishing process in Lectora, it's just another publishing option. Mm -hmm. So if you're already familiar with that publishing process and you've been publishing to your LMS or to your website or what have you, you just go through that same exact publishing process except this time selecting to publish to review link. And from there, we do all of the work. So from there, we make it very easy for your reviewers to create their comments and what have you. And the review link system itself, as I showed, tabulates all those comments, collects them, and makes them available to both publishers and reviewers so you can go through and look at them and address them and access them. And yeah, that's great. we just really, this, this tool is very close to my heart because we spent a lot of time obviously listening to our clients, but then also really thinking through how is this going to work and how is this going to best benefit our users. And mm -hmm. I am happy to say that I think we found a pretty elegant solution yeah, and we're I, really excited about it. I agree. I think you did. It's a, it's a nice implementation of, of, of this kind of, of tool. And uh, is this going to be a free service or is this a, a for pay service later on? Well, as of right now in the beta, it is indeed a free service. We are going to continue to keep it as a free service with um, basically a limited number of content items. Okay. So each Lectora author or publisher will have the ability to publish a certain number of content items to review link for free. And then beyond that, if for whatever reason, we've had clients saying, wow, this would be a great audit tool for me and I want to store my stuff up here forever. Um, if that's the case, we're going to give our authors the ability to purchase additional storage space in review link so that they can basically store as many content items up there as they need to. That sounds real reasonable. Here's some questions. Uh, Jeff is curious if the content on the site is secure. That for our obvious reasons. It is secure. It's there's no way that anyone can access the content other than through review link. And as you saw, you do have to have a unique user ID and a corresponding password to access it. So um, unless you have some kind of credentials to get into review link, mm -hmm. there. You can't get there, and nobody can access that content otherwise. And what so indeed, of, it is secure. And what a lot of people don't know is that Tanya is also a cryptologist. She's very good at oh. this stuff. In is a former true? life, In perhaps. a former life. <laughs> but you never Don lose that. Don was curious. Um, I'm not sure that you covered this, if it, if it will be kept within the bundle. And I'm, I'm thinking, as, if Don, if you're talking about the Inspire bundle. Actually, review link is available regardless of the version of Lectora that you're using. So whether you're using just our Lectora publisher product, which is Lectora standalone without the additional tools that I spoke about earlier, or whether you're using the Lectora Inspire version, you will have access to review link. So we have not limited it to Inspire users only. Anybody okay. using Lectora, the latest version of it, will have access to this. And you do need to okay. have Lectora at least 10.6, correct? Or at least 10. That's correct. So you do need to upgrade to the latest version, um, version X.6 or 10.6 as you're referring to it, mm -hmm. that we released in December. And as soon as you upgrade to that version of Lectora, you will have that publishing option available in your publish menu in Lectora. And that's what's going to give you access to review link. Yep. Don was saying <laughs> that uh, she really likes the interactive whiteboard feel of it. Uh, it just seems so necessary in the design cycle, which I agree with. I mean, it, 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 I could see it as being such a gap, you know, pre-December and so obviously needed. Uh, so, yeah, Dawn is agreeing with that. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, you're like, yay, that's why I'm here. <laughs> yay. That sounds good. Are, are you going to show anything else or do we get to get you back? 
I think you can get me back, actually. I um, don't really have, unless anybody wants to see something in particular, I don't really have anything more to show. It's a pretty simple tool. I showed you the most of it, so. No, that's great. Perfect. It's great. And you know what? That's one thing I've always loved about Lectora. It is simple. It, in its simplicity, it does a ton of things. And, it, you know, don't, don't confuse simple for lack of power. Mm. I like that. And I think we need to get your video back on. There you go. There I we go. I see a woman in shades. Is in that you? Is your is your Skype picture you with uh, glasses on? <laughs> that is me. Yes, that was you. Okay, now we're seeing <laughs> you. You for real. <laughs> me, me for real, live. Yes, yes. in action. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> so you're that's also involved in the user interface and and UX part of it. Any, anything happening in that area? Yes, indeed. Actually, we are doing a complete user interface overhaul of Lectora itself. It's been a long time coming, and um, we've recognized over time, again, listening to our clients and, and obviously evaluating other tools that they use. Um, the application is almost 12 years old now, and because of that, it's just giant. So it has been, it's a huge undertaking for us to redo this interface, but we found it absolutely necessary. We're working on it right now, and um, we intend to have a brand new version of Lectora available this summer with a whole right. new user interface and user experience that I think everyone's really going to love. I'm very excited about it. And um, I have only one request that it's not gray on gray. <laughs> <laughs> that it's not Every, gray on everything gray. Everything is so unreadable nowadays. You'd be surprised how many vendors like Adobe and others are getting dinged for unreadable interfaces because engineers are developing it, but they don't work on it eight hours a day or 10 hours mm -hmm. a day. And so when they do, all of a sudden you go, my eyes hurt, my eyes are tired, my eyes have strain. And that happens a lot. I mean, not. I, mean, I know I feel it, but I know thousands and thousands of others have complained about the same kind of problems mm -hmm. because everybody's gone to teeny-weeny icons, gray text on lighter gray backgrounds or darker gray backgrounds. You go, okay, unreadable. You know, it's, it's sort of interesting. Well, I think it's interesting uh, not doing that. Um, um, we are trying yes. to actually make the new user interface as visual as possible with with larger icons Yay. versus what we have today. Yay. So we've listened, we've heard that so many times, and we are an offender currently with the Lector <laughs> interface that we have because we have a million of these tiny little icons. But they're actually and readable, though. But they will definitely readable. be remedying that in the future version. Okay. Well, they are readable, though, so that's not a problem. A couple questions from the chat room. First of all, um, Jeff was curious if you have um, Snagit or Camtasia already, and then you get Lectora, do they work with Lectora or does it need to be part of the bundle, the, the inspired bundle? So there are just some, some minor differences, really. Um, certainly, if you have those tools already, absolutely, you can still continue to use the content that you've created with those tools in your Lectora titles. What we've done okay. with the versions that we've integrated directly with Lectora are, is specifically we've um, enabled you to have basically round trip editing so that in Lectora, for example, if you're within Lectora and you've launched, let's say Snagit and you've created a, a screen capture and then you've saved it and you've brought it into your title, we give you the ability then with that screen capture that when you click the edit button, it's going to go ahead and automatically bring that screen capture up in Snagit again for you to be able to edit and work with it. So okay. if you're using the, the, I guess, pro version of these tools that are not necessarily part of the Inspire bundle, then you won't necessarily have the benefit of that round trip editing, but you mm -hmm. will still be able to easily obviously create your content in those tools and then drag and drop those files into your title. So it's all still very usable. It's okay. just that the, uh, I guess the relationship or the interoperability, interoperability of the programs is not quite as tightly integrated as it is okay. with the Lectora versions that are in Inspire. Yeah, and Jeff, just, just in case you're curious, we have both. We've got the Inspire version and we have the individual tools mm -hmm. and it works well either way. So you're not you're not losing anything by not going inspire. You're gaining something if you don't have the other tools. So okay. it works it works both ways. He's also curious if uh, Lectora or if you Tanya are going to be in Orlando for Learning Solutions in March. 
I will not be there, but yes, indeed, Trivanis will have a presence at the conference, and we Good. will have one of our best trainers there. Or actually, our director of training will be there and helping out and facilitating some demos and whatnot. So we're definitely looking forward to that show as well. Fantastic. And, and Tanya, while we're at it, what shows are you going to be at in the near future? Gosh, I don't know. I don't seem to find out about <laughs> these things until until not too soon before the show. <laughs> No, that's not completely Here's your true, ticket. But, have, um, have fun, as right? As of right now, I don't have anything on my schedule for future shows, although I, I will most likely be attending the M Learning Conference that will be happening in, um, I believe it's in San Jose again this year. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned that you live in California, but right now you're in Boca Raton, Florida. I'm curious, when you're there, what's kind of a day in the life when you're in Boca uh, at work? What kind of stuff are you doing that's different than when, you, when you're in California? Um. Typically, I, yes, I do work remotely. I work from my home, and um, mm -hmm. I, as of right now, I've mostly been involved with just a lot of meetings, which have, because I work remote, have been WebEx meetings and whatnot, mostly because we've mm -hmm. been completing the Lectora user interface design. So as I'm down here, we're actually completing the design this week, and mm -hmm. um, the, my direct team that I've been working with on the design is all here this week so that we can tie up loose ends and finish it from there. But over the last several months, I've really just been working on uh, mock-ups for our various products, some of the interface changes we want to do, not only to Lectora, but some of our other products, and uh, getting those through to our development teams and getting their feedback, and then also holding user validation sessions to ensure that some of these changes are going to meet our clients' needs. That okay, so those are like remote focus groups? I'm sorry? Are those like remote focus groups? They are. They are. They're very much remote focus groups. We um, do some of these things via WebEx. Sometimes we just issue some brief surveys, if you will, to get their feedback on certain items. Sometimes we send them screen captures or mock-ups and have them evaluate those type of things. So we use a lot of different methods and a lot of different technologies, if you will, to work with our uh, user panels. Well, I'm realizing now that when you're in California, as you mentioned, you're in your home office. I thought there might have been a, a, a Trivantis office there, but it sounds like you're working just simply remotely, and this is the mothership when you're in Boca. I am. I am. Our okay. headquarters is actually in Cincinnati, Ohio, and up in our okay. headquarters is where you'll find our sales and marketing and our administrative teams and support and that type of thing. Down here in Boca Raton is our entire test and development team. So we've always been, even since the inception of Trivantis, we've always been a two-city company, at least in the, in the main offices. So this office has always existed down here, and I actually spent a considerable amount of time working down here from this office and then moved out west for western living. <laughs> Got it. Oh, I hear you. And, and, and we can do that now. We can work remotely. You're actually in the mountains, um, aren't you? I am. I, I am. Thought, I yeah. actually live um, not in California, but in Nevada. I'm on. I'm five oh. minutes from the California Nevada border. But wow! Oh, that must be gorgeous up there. It is. It certainly is. I can smell the fresh air from here. <laughs> now, now, Tanya, one thing I've noticed, or I've been wishing for, on flypaper, you guys going to put a timeline in soon? Well, we have in flypaper. We have. Um, we have a little bit of a timeline there that enables you to time through the various interactions that are on the pages. Is there something different that you're referring to? Maybe I was thinking on the, uh, maybe I'm thinking of options where things appear and disappear. I guess you can, well, I haven't played that much with flypaper, but um, I think when you have options and you can type in when to appear, when to disappear, I don't think that's on the timeline. Or maybe it isn't, I missed it. Yeah, that might not be. The timeline in Flypaper is kind of more just like a, um, a scrubber, if you will, right, right. so that you can use it to actually manipulate um, the, the timeline of the project and see where those changes occur. So it doesn't enable you to do any sort of direct editing from that timeline, but it's there. One day, maybe. Uh, and then we have a final question from, from Jeff. Sim it's a very simple one. Where is the best place to get Lectora from? Well, um, 
us, of course. <laughs> we actually need to jump on the website to and purchase, from purchase there right from it. our website. So if you go to trivanis.com, you do have the ability to purchase right then and there. We also give you the ability to download a trial right off of our website. So if you want to try it out for 30 days first, we also allow you to do that. And um, you can purchase right from our website or certainly contact one of our sales representatives. And then separately for people in other countries, um, I think, was Jeff the one from Australia yeah, here? Yeah, that's right. He's from Down Under. Mm -hmm. We do have some uh, resellers in Australia that represent Lectora and, and that have our products as well. Um, specifically, ITC Learning is a re strong reseller of ours in, in Australia, and certainly you could get it from them as well. Okay, okay I'm making a note of that, that in our chat notes. notes. Thank, Thank you so much for that. that. Sure. Okay, we are real close to the end of our, I guess we've done about almost 50 minutes. So we've done I well. think we've covered a lot of work. This is our little goodbye music. Tanya, Hi. it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. And I think I think we talked about having you on again pretty soon. Talk about some other stuff. Sure, why not? I'd love to. That sounds great. I know I know your marketing team wanted you on several times and we said, good, sure, good, come on over. <clears throat> No problem. We'll figure out what to talk about next, and I'll be happy to join again. That sounds great. And, Jean, you have a great week. Thank you. I'll be seeing you in about a week and a half for lunch. Um, sure, I'll look forward to that. And, Tanya, anytime you're down in the L.A. area, give us a call. Will do. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, in the chat room for being there. And we will see you all next week on eLearn Chat. Have a good Bye, one, everybody. Everyone. Thanks.